Hey everybody, it's Wendy. Welcome. I'm so excited that you're here today. I want to uh, just give you a warning right up front that um, <laughs> it is possible to, that we will be interrupted either by a dog barking or a child coming in and needing something. Um, so just know it's summertime and that's just life, right? I mean, I, there's nothing I can do about it. So if we get interrupted by a kiddo or a dog, I just ask for your patience and that you roll with it and we will make the best out of this adventure, okay? So welcome. Today is the Lovely Stampers Team Make and Take event. If you're wondering what a Lovely Stamper is um, and you're watching this, that is just a team member on my team. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and that just means that they've signed up under me to be a um, independent demonstrator as well. And so once a month, we do a fun get together here on YouTube where everybody can chat in. You're welcome to chat in as well. Tell us where you're from. Um, and I hope that it gains exposure for my team and for myself and that we have just a fun time. So today I'm going to be making a really fun card. I just have one card to make, but I have several cards to show. Um, because I wanted to feature the Always an Adventure stamp set and framelit set. Now, I want to just share my thoughts on this. When I first saw this in the catalog, I immediately loved it because I live in the country and I'm actually only a couple hours from Tahoe and it really reminds me of Tahoe, actually, when I saw this. That's where I thought of first. And, um... So I live near Lake Tahoe and I live in the country and my husband fishes and we're very outdoorsy people. So this set screamed out to me. However, when I saw it, I thought, man, I don't know how many different ways I could use that because I'm really bad about if I see a sample of something um, oftentimes that sample then sticks in my head and that's kind of like the only thing I can see making with that set. I, do, I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but, um, that happens to me a lot. Hey, Christy. Hey, Rosemary. Hey, Catherine. Hey, Wendy. Thanks for joining. Um, and yeah, if you can chat in and tell us where you're from and what you're up to today, that would be great. And I will respond as I can. Um, okay, so this is what we're using, and then I'm also using the Greatest Greeting stamp set, and we're going to be using the Sentiment World's Greatest Guy, because let's face it, this is going to be fantastic for making your masculine cards, right? So this is a great masculine card stamp set, and that's something that um, I oftentimes struggle with making masculine cards, so um, yeah, I love this set for that. All right. So that's enough of the spiel about all of those things. Yay. Hey, Tanya. I'm glad you're crafting. I have a piece of, I think this is cut up four inches by five and a quarter. And um, it's either that or four and an eighth by five and three eighths. I don't know. Either one. Anyways, it's Arches Cold Press 140 pound watercolor cardstock. Hey, Chantel. You could you the card stock you want to. I just happen to really love this card stock and so this is what I use. Um, Stampin' Up! sells watercolor card stock if you're a beginner. I highly recommend um, grabbing a pack of their card stock and just playing with it and then as you get more familiar with watercoloring maybe investing in some a little bit more expensive paper um, or whatever. I mean really any watercolor card stock will work. Hey Jason good to see you on here. Hey, Andrea from North Carolina. Okay, so I've got several colors here that we're going to use for the base. And I know you guys have no idea what I'm making, and that's the fun of it. But this is going to be the base um, that's going to get me started. But before we do that, I have to do a little bit of heat embossing. So I have an image here from the stamp set, and this is just the little bitty stars that are in the stamp set. And I'm going to show you a couple tricks using... Mark ink and my heat embossing, or I mean my <laughs> clear or uh, white embossing powder. Good grief. So I keep my white embossing powder in. Hey, Canada, how are you? Kathleen from Canada, thanks for joining us. 
I have my white embossing powder here and I keep it in this big tub and that's because I use white embossing powder more than I use anything else. And so um, I have kind of this big container of it and I have a spoon that just lives in here so that I can scoop it up and put it on my project. Anytime you do heat embossing, you want to start out using your embossing buddy. This is something you can get from Stampin' Up! and it's full of powder and you basically can just rub it on a surface. That works great for regular cardstock. However, this is Arch's uh, cold press watercolor cardstock and it is really rough. So I like to dab and rub and that just makes me know for sure that I'm getting plenty out of this embossing buddy onto this cardstock. So now I'm going to use my Versamark ink, and this is a sticky ink, and I'm going to ink up my stars and start pushing these stars down onto this watercolor cardstock. Um, now, a lot of you have joined since the beginning, and I don't know how many heard my disclaimer right at the beginning, but it is very possible that we will be interrupted by either dogs or children. Um, I'm apologizing in advance. <laughs> it is summertime and my kiddo is home and the neighbor has a bunch of kids over and right before we started this, she said to me, I'm going to run and get pizza for the kids. Can you watch them? And I went, ah, I'm in the middle of a tutorial. So we made them all get out of the pool and, um, they're hanging out outside, but you know, it never fails. I'm sure at some point one of them will run in here and say to me, I need this or I need that or so-and-so did something to me. I mean, you know, it's always something, right? Okay, so all I'm doing with this little brush, this is a little brush I keep handy. I'm just knocking off excess embossing powder that I got in areas that I did not want it. And I don't know if you can, you probably can't really see. Um, but I added in my embossing powder and then I'm going back in with my Versamark and I'm adding a few more stars because now I can see really clearly where those first stars are that I had already stamped. All right, so now I can go back in and add more embossing powder. And I'm just doing this to knock off the excess. And I do have to go back in and knock off any little spots where embossing powder got that I don't want it. And I can see some here and there. And I get that because I push too hard on the stamp. <laughs> if I wouldn't push so hard, um, it wouldn't have that problem. All right, so now you have to listen to the heat gun. It's got to heat up for just a minute. I hope you guys can hear me over the heat gun. But it has to do its thing and get nice and hot before I stick it to my paper because this will help prevent warping on my paper. So I'm just gonna go in and start melting this embossing powder. And it is hard to see. So this is um, the first technique that I'm doing here is an emboss resist technique. Emboss resist. And so basically um, I will be painting over the top of this and the color is going to resist the embossing because it's slick to the surface and so it will not actually um, pick up the color. Okay, almost done. Make sure that you chat in and tell me where you're visiting from. I love to know. One of my favorite things about doing this is getting to visit with people from all over the world. Okay, so that's all done. And now I'm going to do my coloring. So I've got several inks here. I have Watermelon Wonder. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Flirty Flamingo. Whoops, I don't know what I'm doing. I need the palette. <laughs> Okay, so I'm squeezing them in the center to get ink on the palette, and then I'm opening them up. And I'm using Sweet Sugar Plum and finally Rich Razzleberry. So when I went to make this card, in my head, I was thinking about 
what it looks like when my husband and I go camping high in Missouri and, and my daughter, we take her too. <laughs> I shouldn't leave her out and what it looks like at night and kind of like when the sun has set, but it's not quite all the way down. So you have all these crazy colors in the sky, but it's still nighttime. So that's kind of what I was going for when I created this card. So what we're doing is picking up ink and I'm doing this in no particular order, except that I really wanted my lighter colors a little bit towards the bottom and my darker colors a little towards the top. And that's because when the sun sets, that is exactly how it looks. You have, you know, it's brighter down at the bottom where the sun is setting and higher up in the sky, you're getting um, the darker colors. So I'm using my Watermelon Wonder here, and I'm just using my Aqua Painter brush to go over the top of this. I need a little more water in my brush. So I'm just squeezing the brush at this point to push more water out and down. Okay, now we're gonna go in with the big guns. And you don't really wanna cover up um, everywhere that you've already inked, but it's okay to cover it up some, if that makes sense. So I'm just kind of being crazy here, putting color down wherever I think it's a good idea. And then that's our base, okay? So you can clean your aqua painter brush by simply rubbing it along, squeezing water out so it comes down, and then just wiping it till, it till everything that comes out of it is clean, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. London, Kentucky. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Is that Ima? I, I can't really see because I'm Belgium. Belgium is in the house. That is amazing. I love it. Hey, Carlin. Okay, so our next step, I've got the Zig Kiritaki Gonzai Tombai watercolors. That's a mouthful. And um, I'm using the black down here. Here's the thing. You have to make sure um, that you use an opaque or heavy pigment watercolor to do this technique. You can't do this technique using a water-based black um, stamp pad. It won't work. It will, it will muddle everything. And you'll see what I mean by that. So I'm just going to squeeze water through my aqua painter. And I'm picking up the black ink or watercolor pigment onto my brush. And then in a circular motion, I'm going to go around. Don't panic. I know this looks horrible at first, but, but it's going to be okay, I promise you. In a circular motion, I'm going around and I'm covering up a lot of this color. However, if you notice, I'm not dipping my brush back into the ink continually or the watercolor. That's because I want areas for the color to peek through. I don't want it to um, completely cover the color that we've created underneath. But I also don't want that color to be brilliant either because remember we want this to look like a night sky. So I want to just show you this. Hi in Australia. This is not something I would normally do. I would just normally dry this, but I want to show you if I do this, look at all that that comes off. And you see underneath is still all of our color. So that's what's important about using a heavy pigment or an opaque watercolor that will set on top of what you've already done. It also um, lends to the paper, the quality of the paper that I'm using. Um, when you use a, a higher quality watercolor paper, it's much easier to layer color. Okay, so I'm Again, just gonna go add this back over the top. And now I've got this really beautiful night sky. 
it's going to become even more beautiful in just a second, but we're getting there. Okay. This is a step-by-step -step process for creating the sky. All right. So I'm going to clean my brush by squeezing water out of it and wiping it here. I could also use my towel and do this way. That works as well. So you see, I've got stars now that are muddy or discolored. We don't want that. However, what we do want to do is start drying some of this off because we don't want a wet background. So I'm just drying this a little and letting it set back. And you can see as you dry it, the black on top starts to fade a little bit. So you, you're seeing this color start to come through. So what do we do now about these stars that are dirty? There's your trick, okay? This is so fun. I actually really enjoy doing this. This is like entertaining for me. You take your wet aqua painter tip and you're just, oh, see, this is still a little too wet, but we're going to roll with it. And you just go over those little stars with your aqua painter brush and wet the surface of them and then dab the color right back off those stars. It's so simple. And I actually, I actually find it therapeutic. Um, I don't know why. I think I like the way it looks when that bright white pops out from under that black. Um, I think it just looks really cool. So you have a lot of options at this point with this technique. You could add, okay, the dogs are probably going to start barking. I'm warning you now. <laughs> Hoping not, but possibly. I've got one right here behind me. Um, anyway, so you're going to, you could do all kinds of things. You could add some silver mist at this point. You could do tons of different stuff to this background to make it look more like a galaxy. But I just want it to look like a night sky. So I'm going to take my Signo um, Uniball Broad Roller Pen, and I'm just going to come in and start making random dots straight up and straight down. This helps tie in those stars so that they don't look so um, weird. I, that's the best word I can use. They don't, you know, you, the stars are all very separated, obviously. So in order to kind of draw that white down a little bit and kind of make everything look more like a sky, it helps to add these little random stars all over the place. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so that is my night sky. Now, um, oh boy, here, there's the dogs. Do you have to wait for your background colors to dry before adding the black? Uh, no, you can, they can be damp. I mean, you don't want the color running. So I should have mentioned this. I'm glad you asked that, Wendy. So if you notice, I did not wet the surface of my watercolor paper and then add color to it. When you do that, you're having excess water then. What I did is I picked up the color and then I added it to my watercolor paper. So this paper at this point is damp to the touch, but it's not runny. It's not watery and it's not runny. So that's the consistency that you want it to be. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so next step. I have pre-cut all of these pieces because, as you can see, it would take a long time to sit and cut them all with you on video, and I wanted to be able to move this project along somewhat quickly. So um, I'm going to get all my little die cuts out here. And again, I used the Always an Adventure stamp set and uh, Framelit set to do this. Okay. So the first step that we're going to do is adding the mountains to our background. Now, I cut all of these things to be extra long at the bottom because I didn't know how high up or how low I would want them. So I don't want these, if I were to line the bottom of this up here, I don't want my mountains that high in the sky. I'm going to bring those down, and that's totally fine. I can do that pretty simply because I can just trim away the bottom excess, okay? 
So I'm going to go ahead and pull them down about there. And now I can go ahead and add them on with my fast fuse adhesive. Oh, for heaven's sakes, the dogs, the dogs, the dogs. Story of my life. Okay. So there's that. And now I can see that I somehow trimmed my watercolor background a little bit larger than my um, my mountains. So that's okay. I can fix that. I'm just going to come in like this and trim away that excess on each side because I do not want that showing because I don't like the way it looks. <laughs> okay, so that's done. And then for the bottom part, I will just take my scissors, my paper snips. Normally I would use larger scissors, but this is what I have sitting next to me in my video area and trim that off. So now I've got my, my base that I'm going to be working with. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to add my, um, trees. So again, this is cut way too big because I did that on purpose. So I wanted it that way. Um, sorry guys, hold on one second. Just shutting the door, hoping that blocks some of the sound from kids and dogs. So this will be my next layer that's going to go down and I'm going to just place it right on top. But before I do that, I really want to add the tops to my mountains. So I have my little mountain tops here that I've already cut out and I'm going to give you a tip. The best way to adhere these is to use a pair of tweezers. Any tweezers will work. Hello, Massachusetts. And I'm just going to add some glue and place these mountain tops down. So let's get these on really quick so we can move on to the next fun part. This is like the tedious part. Everything I do has at least one thing that's tedious that nobody likes doing. <laughs> so we have, we are really covering the globe here. We've got Australia, we've got Belgium. I know my friend Jason's in Connecticut. We've got uh, Massachusetts, North Carolina, Missouri. Where else are we from? I love it. So exciting to me. Okay, so these little guys are cut one direction, but I simply just turn them over if I want them to go the opposite direction. And they fit fine. They work perfectly. Oh, yeah, Ohio. Carlin's from Ohio. That's right. Okay, I also am going to be having a prize drawing for um, my team members here towards the end of our little make and take project. And anybody who's on my team gets this make and take for free as long as they join in live like they're doing. And um, all they have to do is email me and ask for it and then they get it for free, which is pretty exciting. Okay, so we're going to layer this piece down and you can see now I'm putting the fast fuse down here because we're going to be covering this up. By the end of this, this card is really thick and that's okay. That's totally fine because it makes for kind of a cool, cool, nice, hefty card. Okay. So my goal with this card was to make it feel like it was backlit. So when the moon is shining, Sometimes like the stuff in front is dark, but you can kind of like see a glow from behind. So that's what my goal was with this card. I was trying to make everything look like it had backlighting. And I really feel like I was, I did a successful job of that. Um, I was pretty happy with how everything turned out. And um, I don't think I would have changed it. So that's what we're doing now is I'm just going to, very slightly offset the trees so that you just see this really thin green line behind the trees happening. 
So now we're going to go ahead and trim away all this excess so that we can see what we have left to work with. It is important to do this at each step. Um, otherwise, you're going to be gluing stuff where there's no card base, and that's not good. That, that would be horrible. You don't want to do that. Okay. So now we're almost done. I have um, this fun piece. This is just a piece of chocolate chip cardstock, and it is cut. Oh, I see here, I need to trim this off. Good grief, my dog is going nuts. Can you guys hear that? Okay. So what we're gonna do with this is we are gonna trim away all these trees because the ground really isn't black. It's like a dark brown at night. So we've trimmed away all those trees and we're gonna adhere this just right here at the base of the card. There are, um, okay, the snow caps are cut out of the framelit set. There's an actual framelit for it right there. And hey, Wisconsin and Virginia and Colorado and Minnesota and Maine, I love that. Um, and Christy, the, there are 12 colors in the Kiritaki set that I have. So they make a set that has 36 colors in it, but I just didn't find it necessary to get that because I've been taking so many watercolor classes. I've really learned how to mix color. If you're not comfortable mixing color, then I would recommend getting the 36 set, but I was comfortable with it. And so I went ahead and just went for it. Okay. So this is our base, and now we're gonna do a little bit more heat embossing. I have my Versamark ink, and I have my stamp set here, World's Greatest Guy, because this whole card was inspired by my husband, really, because he is like the campy, camping type of dude. And if you were smart, you would stamp that before you adhere to this piece in case you messed up your stamping. I'm not smart. And I also forgot to use my embossing buddy. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just like flicked stuff all over the place. Good grief. Okay. I'm going to have a big mess to clean up when I'm done here. And I did. So this is a crate. Um, hey, from the Netherlands and Pennsylvania. This is a great example of why the embossing buddy is so important. Um, I didn't use it because I forgot because I'm talking and hanging out with you guys while I'm doing this. And I have excess embossing powder all over the place on the bottom of this card. And so now I have to go in and try to clean it up so that it doesn't stick everywhere. And there's really no other way to fix that. It just is what it is. Okay, so we are going to heat this up and heat set this. I should have been warming up my heat tool. Normally I cut all this stuff out of a video so you guys don't have to watch it. But when you're live, there's not much else you can do. <laughs> okay, so now that's all heat set and it says world's greatest guy. And I just have a couple few little things left to do. I have this cute little tent that is part of the framelit set. And I have embossing powder all over the place at this point. And I'm going to take the orange tent and do just what I did with the trees and just offset this tent just slightly, just enough so that you can see 
that this tint is supposed to be orange. But again, it's backlit because you don't have a bunch of light coming from the front. Now, I tried everything in the world that I could possibly think of to create light around this little fire. I already colored and stamped and hand cut out this little fire because it took me a little bit to do and I knew this video was going to be long anyway. So I thought, well, I'll just do this ahead of time. I really wanted a halo glowing behind this or around this fire, but I couldn't figure out how to do it, so I didn't. So if you have a great idea on how to do it, I would love to know. Okay, so you, I don't know who that person is, but he's, how do you block somebody? Can I block this person? <laughs> block user. Okay. Uh, that took care of that. We don't need any trolls hanging out with us. Okay, so the last step is to adhere this to the card base. And instead of doing that, I'm going, because I don't, I forgot to bring my all my stuff. I'm just going to show you the finished. This is the finished product. How beautiful is that? Isn't that fun? And everyone turns out just a little bit different because of your background. The last other step I did was add Wink Estella to the mountaintops so that they're shiny. So this is my super fun, always an adventure card. Now I have more to show you. Um, I'm not gonna do a tutorial on all the rest of the stuff I'm showing you, but I do have more to show you. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this one because it was a labor of love. And I felt so excited that it was just like my idea because so often I copy other people <laughs> because I just can't come up with ideas sometimes. Okay, so I am going to clean this area up just a little bit real quick boy my dogs are having a fit about something outside I tell you of course because it's like they're like kids they know when you're indisposed and you can't do anything about it okay um all right so these are some other samples using this set. This is a happy birthday card, opens this way. And this is a little sneak peek for anybody who orders from me. This is going to be one of the card kits avail available to you in August. So I just love how it turned out so much that I thought I would offer it as one of the kits in August. So this is all using the same stamp set and framelit set. The only difference is the sentiments. I used different sentiments from different sets. Okay, this is another sample. And this one was inspired by golfing. It made me, I was trying to think of what kind of like a golf course would look like. And so I did this one kind of based on that idea. Um, it would be cute to have a little golf thing right here, like a flag, but I just didn't have time to figure out how to make that, so I didn't do it. This next one is one of my favorites. It is a sidestep folding card. So it sits up like this. So when you're looking at it, it looks like this. And it has all these layers, and it has mountains, and I just love how this one turned out. And then when you open it, you can sign your name and stuff in here and put your greeting in that area. So this was another fun idea using the Always an Adventure stamp set and framelit set. And then this is for my little girl. I created this little bookmark. And I just used a soft sky card base. And then I cut out a bunch of clouds and I punched a one and one quarter inch circle in Daffodil Delight and put it up here. These are in Crumb Cake and these are stamped in Always Artichoke and this is stamped in Dapper Denim. And then I ran it through my laminator so that it would be nice and sturdy and laminated. And I added, I punched a hole and added a little bit of Dapper Denim um, ribbon to the top for a bookmark. 
So those are my fun projects using Always an Adventure stamp set. I just love this set. The card, the stamp set and the framelit set are all amazing. And I, I really wanted to just keep creating ideas and projects using this, but frankly, I ran out of time. And so um, I'm hoping that you get this set because it's so fantastic. And I just love it. it. makes so many cool things. Okay. Okay. So that's my demonstration. I do have a giveaway. And where's my giveaway? Here it is. I'm giving away to one of my team members that's live on the call a pack of in color doilies and the seaside texture embossing folder. So you have to be on my team in order to win this. So if you're on my team and you're live, rather than us doing it here, I want you to go over to Facebook and I want you to comment underneath our video that's posted on our special Facebook group. I want you to comment there and tell me which one of the cards that I did or showed you was your favorite. And um, I will choose a winner from our Facebook page. So Thank you so much, Wendy and Carlin. If you're on my team and you're part of my exclusive Facebook group for my team, go over and leave a comment on which sample was your favorite and I'll choose a winner. You have to be participating live though in order to be entered into this um, drawing. And also, if you're on my team and you would like this card kit sent to you for free and you're live, you're watching live, which I've made notes of who I've seen pop in here that's on my team, you need to email me at wendy.cranford at live.com and I will send you a free card kit. But you do have to be on my team because this event is a special event just for my team members. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up everything. Does anyone have any questions or comments? This was super fun and I love doing um, this card for you because it, it was such a fun card. Thank you so much, Darlene. I really appreciate your comments. And this is the most viewers I've ever had on a live event. So um, at one point we had 56 people on here and that is pretty exciting. I have to say I'm pretty excited about that. I'm so glad you tuned in. Okay, well, um, here in sunny California where dogs are barking and kids are playing, I am going to sign off and leave you um, just with a happy note of get out there and craft, make something beautiful. If you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, go make a card and give it to somebody and hand out some catalogs. And... Um, if you're not a demonstrator, you should totally jump on the bandwagon and become one. We would love to have you. Thanks so much for watching and tuning in. And if you have any questions, you can email me or click on the link in the description that takes you to my website and fill out a contact me form. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.